Um, Noetic Fund is a venture fund that is focused on investing in the central nervous system. So our objective is to solve the issue relating to the mental health crisis. So we're investing in modalities that are going to usher in an actual solution to the root cause of all these issues that we're having with mental health. Everything from treatment resistant depression, major depressive disorder, PTSD, anxiety, to cognitive impairment, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. So we're looking at cross modalities into drug development, drug discovery, as well as other modalities that you know would, would entail medical devices, uh, the requisite infrastructure, and so on. And we've, we've been around since uh, early 2020. Um, we've had uh, two funds now. We've got our first fund is closed. That's generated a little close to 400% in, in return from inception. Uh, we're now in our second fund. Uh, we're raising capital for that and have already made about five investments in our second fund. The, the key thing to understand is that it's a bit of a golden era for neuroscience. We've learned more about the brain and the functioning of the psyche over the last five years than we have in any other point in history. So that's the first thing to understand. There's a lot that we've learned about how the brain actually functions. So you have to keep in mind that the brain is probably the most complex organism in the entire universe. It's got well over 100 billion neurons that are connected, each are connected to 10,000 other neurons. So you've got about over 100 trillion connections that are taking place. So it's very complex. And what we've learned over the last five years of the makeup of the brain, the way it affects mood, the way it affects what we do, what we do, um, has been really profound. So that's one part of it, is an understanding of the complexity of the brain, a better understanding of it. The second is, obviously, the pandemic has had a huge impact on mental health. And it's, it's sort of accelerated the attention on mental health. So mental health is no longer a taboo subject. We're, we're, we're discussing it openly, and but it's come to to the forefront, right? We we really need to deal with it. It's it's um, the you know the, the the actual cost associated with mental health and the way it takes away from pro productivity is well into billions and billions of dollars globally. The third thing is that the FDA has recognized certain key developments. Uh, especially when it comes to psychedelics, for example, the drug development, drug discovery in psychedelics has identified those as being break with breakthrough designation status, BTD status, breakthrough designation, which means that the efficacy of some of these compounds in treating many of these mental health ailments have been pretty profound so far. And they're saying, listen, this is enough for you guys to continue to do the research here because there's something very compelling going on. This is an emerging space, Andrew. So uh, I think the market cap, when you take into what's happening in the private space, as well as public, there are well over 50 publicly traded stocks that are focused on this area in this space. The market is still relatively small. It may be below 5 billion or so. Um, that being said, that being said, this is probably one of the greatest unmet needs that we've ever seen. And I think a prime example that I can give is we're all using tools like Zoom right now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Zoom wouldn't be around if it wasn't for uh, you know, broadband computing, if it wasn't for cloud computing that came onto the scene in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. When that came on, that technology allowed us to have applications and platforms like Zoom. In the same way, there have been events that have taken place over the last five years in neuroscience and, and brain development and understanding of the way the brain functions that make this the right environment to invest in the space at an early enough stage where we're expecting to see some really profound results. And, you know, if our first fund is, is, is you know, perhaps giving any clue to how things have been, our first fund has generated a very, very decent size return, right? close to 400% since inception, which is February of 2020. Um, and so there, there's a long runway here. Um, it's a long road, mind you. There are a lot of risks, of course. Mm -hmm. But the key risk, which is, does the science work or not? That's been solved. The risk's now more around plumbing, which, we can, which are easier to solve. The cannabis industry was a revenue model that was based on recreational use, okay? Everything that's happening in psychedelics, for the most part, is in drug development, drug discovery predominantly. 
So it's a pharma approach. It's a drug development approach. It's about delivery mechanisms. It requires FDA approval. It requires the DEA to sign off on it as well, right? It, so there are a lot of um, um, you know, uh, processes that you have to go through in order to show that what you're working on is for you know, uh, accessibility, for scale, and it is in a position to actually solve the distinct problems that they're going after. They're going after indications. Treatment resistant depression is an indication. Um, major depressive disorder is an indication. Alcohol, alcohol use disorder is an indication, right? So these are distinct indications that many of these companies that are working with psychedelics are going through. So it's different because it's more of a biotech approach. It's more of a farm approach as opposed to it being a recreation. So, so cannabis was you know, more along those lines as opposed to what's happening in psychedelics. If I can put it in, 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 in the following terms, we go to visit a dental hygienist twice a year probably, maybe three times a year uh, for dental hygiene. If we get to a point where we all of a sudden take a look at what's happening with mental health and in particular with psychedelic drug development, drug discovery, once it's passed FDA approval process and um, it's accessible, that we are able to also go for mental hygiene, much like we go to a dentist. And there are no stigmas associated with that. Right? That allows us to have a reset, what they call a reset, and allows us to be better functioning members of society and, and just functioning in a healthier way and functioning in a way that, that uh, uh, allows us to you know, deal with the stresses of life. And I think going forward, uh, especially in this you know, age where everybody's looking for quick likes and, and quick affirmations and confirmations, um, it's becoming a lot more stressful. We're technologically advanced, um, certainly. But as E.O. Wilson put it, we still have Paleolithic thinking with medieval institutions, um, but we have godlike technology. And the combination of those three make it very difficult for us to function sometimes. And we need to have the right kinds of you know, tools and applications that allow us to function better. And that's the promise. So the promise is, is pretty compelling, I think.